Game has started at the bottom left. We have the Protoss player in the red colors on Crossfire. It is... Ujis MC. Minchul, he needs to make that one count. And actually for him it doesn't matter all too much if he wins or loses. At the po top right we have his opponent, we have RG. MVP Tunglegu. Yeah, thinking about it, actually for MC it doesn't matter all too much if he wins this game or if he loses the game, he will advance to the next round either way. Look at Stefano there, he's looking a little bit tense. He's actually able to watch from the GSTL bench, so you can see a, a high quality stream of the game on that bench. So he's sitting there watching it. You know, of course it's it's not easy for him to watch this, but it's funny how this format can kind of work out that way. Also remember guys to check out the yearly premium ticket, the premium plus tickets. You can get a free Blizzard Cup HQ ticket if you buy that, and uh, check out the plans as well on GOMTV.net because I, I really think that you'll find that you'll find something. There's something for there, there's something for everyone uh, on the site. That's all I can say. <laughs> Don Ragu at the top right is now going for 14-14 opening, uh, basically the standard that you'd expect. While his opponent is going uh, for a uh, gateway, he is walling in right now. And I'm sure MC will give his best nonetheless. I already mentioned that he will advance to the round of six either way, even if he loses that game. John Ragu right now, he is just trying to squeeze in more drones. He will start an expansion fairly soon as well, probably roughly at 20 to 22 supply. This is Crossfire at the PVZ and a lot of Protoss players try to go for an uh, early expand, uh, for an early Forge expand. MC is uh, taking uh, the safer route right now. He's going off for the Cybernetics Core, walling in completely and doesn't give Don Raku any option to attack him head on. Very true. And you know, MC right now is actually going to, he's going to take a second gas. He is going to perhaps go for a multiple gateway sentry expand. Now the question is how many gateways will he make? If he makes less than three, it's going to be almost impossible to hold timing attacks on this map because that area, that choke point is not a choke point basically. It's like the widest choke you've ever seen. There's a ramp that units can funnel down, you can come from the other side. It's so hard to defend that entire area from roaches. So we'll see what MC's got planned here, but I think if he decides to go for a really greedy gateway expand, it's going to be almost as bad as going for a forge fast expand on this map. And one gate expansion is pretty popular, especially uh, um, for, for Korean Protoss players. 22 supply and DRG starts his expansion. Uh, road circling speed is about to be done. The first queen is nearly out as well. Two gas now for MC. 22 to 17 workers. This is really tense. This is really a tense situation, not only for uh, MC and Donagu, but also for Stefano. We've seen him earlier when the game started in the first first sentry is being built for MC right now. Yeah, and it looks like he's actually going to add another gateway at the very least. Yeah, the probe yeah, already like in position. So yeah, he is going to be doing a three gateway expand. Because uh, as any good Protoss knows, on this map it's just so risky to try to do anything less than three gateways to expand on this map. He's going for... he's for better safe than sorry, that's basically what he's thinking right now. Yeah, absolutely so. Stefano is such a good player and he doesn't want to play anything risky against him. Don Ragu. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I like, don't know why I said that. Yeah, we still have the situation in the group now ahead, so... I know, yeah, I'm like... You know, it's... it's MC is playing for Stefano here, essentially, so... It's tense, man, I'm like so... so nervous for both these <laughs> yeah, guys. exactly. I'm exactly the same, I'm sitting here and I'm really, really nervous about what's going to happen next, and MC... You know, it's it's, it's not even that we have a favorite here, it's just like, it's it's so nerve-wracking. This whole thing is going to be decided by this one game here. 39 to 36 supply, now MC is starting to use the warp gates, he will warp in additional three sentries, there they are, and that's the safest route that he can take in this match. He's going for the Nexus right now, he has enough units to hold of any attack used by Don Ragu, but Don Ragu is adding two spine crawlers right now. Yeah, he adds the spines because he knows that if it's three gateways with the se uh, sentry expand, he can actually put pressure on those three gateways as well, so he needs to be prepared for that. He can commit to the two spines for now to ensure that if he wants to, he can only drone if he wants uh, afterwards. He's getting plus one melee weapons right now. A Stargate going down for MC, interestingly enough. And the Forge as well. He might just go for Void Rays and follow that up with a lot of gateway units and try to go for a two-base push. 
Dongrei Gu is actually a little bit nervous here, actually making three spine crawlers now, the third one being started as he actually takes his gases at the natural. Going uh, the Lea Tech now, plus one attack as well. And, well, I have to admit that I'm a huge fan of the plus one armor upgrade, especially against Protoss, but he didn't scout the forge yet, so he doesn't have any idea about that. Photon Cannon going down for MC just to be careful. Does not know exactly what's going on. He hasn't been able to get a ton of scouting information since he saw the early hatchery. Void Ray is being built right now and with a plus one attack upgrade. If he chrono boosts that and gets a second Void Ray, then he might just go for a really, really strong two base timing attack with Void Ray's and Gateway units with a plus one upgrade. That will enable Don Ragu, well, that will enable MC basically to take down his opponent's Zerglings with just two hits. And as Don Ragu is already researching plus one melee attack, he's kind of committing two Zerglings nonetheless. But as you can see, Ball crawler number one being built as soon as the Overlord scouts that Void Ray. Very true. He is actually following it up with a Phoenix. Rallying Phoenix is out behind the Void Ray, but with the Spore already on the way, and with the fact that he already has that additional Queen, even making a fourth one right now, should be totally fine against us. Making a Macro Hatchery now as well, and an Infestation Pit. I love the Infestation Pit choice by Dong Regu in this situation. Infestation pits are just so great when you face a huge number of air units. You can fungal, you can delay, you can just uh, stay a little bit of time in order to build more units. You have the infested Terrans as well to deal with that. So that's really a good choice. And he adds a second Spore Crawler in his main base and expansion as well. So that's playing it really safe by DRG right now. 73 supply against 68, 44 probes against 56 drones. And MC now also going for the, uh, um, for the Twilight Council. Yeah, I like that choice. He's going to get this Overseer as well, which means that Dong Regu is going to have very limited scouting information about what he is doing. He's actually making another Phoenix with more Phoenixes rallied in. He's actually going up to five Phoenixes total with that many Phoenixes. Hold that thought. Zergling run by, shut down by MC. Plus two about, to, uh, sorry, plus one about to finish with the Twilight Council. He can get the plus two upgrade right away if he decides to do so. And Wolf, you're perfectly right. We have the plus two uptake upgrade right now, and he's getting more and more Phoenixes. That's more than you would usually expect from a yeah. one Stargate. Yeah, it's way more than you'd expect. That may be what MC is trying to do with this. He may be trying to catch his opponent off guard. I don't like the idea of trying to come in here and get Queens. It looks like he just wants to scout his opponent's composition out a little bit. Three more gateways and a Twilight Council going down, or a Templar Archives, excuse me. Twilight Council researching charge. I think he's going to hit with a pretty good charge Archon timing attack. These, of course, Phoenix is not going to be able to do a whole lot in that fight. He may be able to lift up Infestors, but this attack could be quite strong. With the extra gateways, he's you know going to be able to make as many Zealots and Templar as he wants. And MC is kind of taking a risk right now. He's taking a lot. Plus two attack, charge, Twilight Council, while getting all those uh, Phoenixes, and of course also the... Uh, oh, Burrow? Well, he's also getting the Void Ray, so that's a lot of stuff. And yep, Burrow with the Infestors. He's going for Ling Infester attack, and there is no Observer. He doesn't have detection except for those cannons. Yeah, the cannons are going to help him out, but it's not going to be easy. With a ton of Infested Terrans dropped, he may be able to break these cannons, especially if he drops some good fungals on the sentries. We're going to see exactly how Dong Regu is going to do this in just a second. First Templar being warped in here. He's actually making Archons immediately. That's a ton of Infested Terrans. The Zealots are not going to be able to do a whole lot against that. Some okay force shields, a Guardian Shield up as well, but I think Dong Regu may just have too much DPS here. He needs to use those Archons. The Archons are trapped behind the cannons. They don't participate in that fight at all. And the Zealots are gone. New force fields being thrown down by MC. Down to 90 supply against 110. DRG now finally has to face the Archons. And the far Archons shut down that attack. But oh, wow, that looked really, really close for a moment. Yeah, and you know, Dong Regu was able to trade pretty well there. He lost a lot of his earlies, but he kept every last Infestor alive. He's going to send them home, and that makes it a lot easier for him to hold off any new counterattacks from MC. It looks like MC realizes, okay, his Infestor is still alive. I have to take a third base here. I can't actually end the game right now. He's taking for Storm right now, and the plus three attack upgrade. He goes for all the attack upgrade that he has, and that single Archon survives. Already has six kills. The other one has 15. And he is adding the robotics. He definitely needs one observer. He needs one observer to deal with his opponents and festers. A third base taken by Don Ragu at the top left. At the bottom right, MC is going for an expand himself. And 
Don Ragu now with the Mutalisks trying to tag plus one and he is getting so many spine crawlers now. Yeah, he's getting so many. You need those spines when you go Mutalisks in this case before your Mutalisks count is good. You need those spines to delay attacks, otherwise you can just die because the Mutalisks are so gas heavy. They're not real fighters, especially considering when there are Phoenixes out and Archons as well. And I really like that MC is going for the tag with Storm. He's going for the High Templar instead of the Colossi. We have a Warp Prism being built right now. The third base attack by Zerglings. There's no way he can break through. There are too many units from MC. The Protoss player from Team Old Generations is on 123 supply. Catching a Queen out of position. Taking that one down. But a Funga hits all of them. All of those Phoenixes fungal taken out by the Mutalist MC dropping in supply by quite a bit but he knows that there is a Muta threat so now he can prepare accordingly plus three attack is about to finish and there is Don Ragu that's not a lot of stalkers that's only four but Storm yeah. is ready Storm is ready does not like you said have a lot of stalkers out right now he lost all those Phoenixes which could really help here Templar Archives being targeted down. He may end up getting it. I don't think he's going to be able to get it, but he has severely damaged it. Is he going to commit? Where's the storm? Nice stop, beautiful storm, and he's actually sticking to it, taking down the Templar Archive. But I actually have to admit, if he went for the main base, there were no cannons at that time. There would have been a lot of dead probes. I think that would have been uh, the better decision for DHG. I think so too, and a lot of his Mutas are so damaged now that he cannot really continue to use them. One storm will kill all of those Mutas, so he has to be extremely careful. 17 drones being made by DRG. He is going for his eco, getting now the Baneling Nest as well as the Roach. Oh, the Mutas flying into cannons oh! and the storm! Oh! But the Zerglings, the Zerglings take the fire and the Mutalist attacking the pilot for some reason. I don't really get that. He doesn't want to approach. He could have attacked the probes, but he doesn't do it at all. Wow, this is just such an intense game. And we have a Warp Prism at the left side of the map. The Mutalists are taken out by the oh, cannon. Wow. Look at that. DRG is losing so many units, but able to focus the probes right now. Yeah, and you know what? Having that Archon inside of the Warp Prism and just popping it out the last second there really caught Dongregu by surprise. He lost so many Mutas there. Dongregu, though, does have the top left of the map. He's got that top left base, and he's got a base a little bit below that one as well. He does not yet have the the top right though because there are zealots there denying that base. But MC is in a decent spot right now. He's got that really strong army he's going to push forward with now. Blink is almost done. Remember he has plus three weapons right now. That's something that Dongregu does not yet have. And Blink is so important if you deal with Mutalist. This is one of the most important upgrades for a Protoss player. MC is now just getting that Templar Archive back, plus one armor. He is using a lot of his upgrades. Don Ragu now upgrading as well. Once again trying to run by with the links, but the Zealots are in position. And DRG forcing MC to get back to defend. The cannons will be taken out. The Zealots, the Zealots take down the Zerglings, but now the... Oh, then he's losing so many probes to those Mutalists. He's losing so many yes, of them. So many probes being taken out there by Dongergu, and he was able to turn the army of MC around. That's the number one key thing there. He's got so many spines set up at each of his bases. Each base has five spine crawlers set up, so it's going to be so, so hard for MC to attack. He's sending some zealots actually to the top left base, but there's spines there already, and it's actually going to be completely shut down, especially with nice transfusers going off there at that top base, Doing completely really shutting job. it down. Doing a really good job right there. Even the plus three attack upgrade doesn't do him any good at all. And now MC is just trying to run by. But Don Ragu putting up the heat. He is just trying to take down that one single robotics. Will MC be able to take that win that he needs right now in order to come back into this game? He's just going for the attack. Don Ragu happy to exchange bases. That is exactly what he's aiming for right now. Attacking with all the roaches and infestors as well. The stalkers are trapped in the back, being taken down. And now with the Hive tech going on, DRG is on 188 supply, while an MC with 150 is taking down that third base. He has a huge army, but will it be enough? Don Ragu building so many spine crawlers right now in order to defend against that. Oh, yeah. but that's nice I move. love this. They're going for the backdoor rocks by MC, making tons of cannons right now at the bottom right base to defend it. He knows it's going to be his crucial final base to defend if it goes to a base transition generation. 
tons of spine crawlers rerouting wow. here, about nine in total. The stalkers blink in, they're not waiting, they're not hesitating here, but the roaches are here. A storm goes off, not the best storms, but Archon's struggling to get in. They're bumping into each other on the ramp, and it looks like Don Ray Goo is going to hold this off. The roaches are screaming in, catching some of the stalkers out of position. Another storm hits the ramp. Beautiful storm this time. A force field blocks the escape route for those roaches, but it's not enough. Don Ragu is on 193 supply. He is able to reinforce his army. Well, MC is down to 127. Most of his buildings have already been killed, and Don Ragu, with a relentless barrage of attacks, is now just taking down the production buildings of his opponent. This doesn't look good for MCDRG with a commanding lead in this game. Absolutely. He's actually going to take out the crucial cybernetics core. That's going to mean only zealots can be warped in. That's not going to be good against the large roach army of Dongriku right now. Oh, this looks horrible. MC is now on the ropes while Stefano is cheering for the Protoss player, but it looks like the Zerg is going to prevail. Another army of Roaches is heading towards the third base of MC at the bottom right, and that's the last stand for the Protoss from Team Old Generations. MC has to pull off some miracle defense. He wants to take this game. DRG expanding end at the top left, and now MC goes for the storms at the choke point. Yeah, and you know what? Dongergu can actually just go back and burrow those roaches and continue the attack later. He can tech to whatever he wants. He's got five infestors on the way. He's got such control over this game. You can even make an ultralist cavern if he wants to. He's totally in control of this game. He's got hive tech. He's got a spire. He's already got plus two for any spire units he makes. His ground units only have plus one carapace, surprisingly. He only has one one upgrades. So that's one thing MC's got going for him is those really good upgrades. But this may be a huge Huge overcommitment by MC. There's too many units. A fungal catches a lot of them. And this looks horrible for MC. Francis cheering for the Protoss player from Korea. But so far, it doesn't look like the prayers have any effect on that game. MC is dropping behind in supply even more. He's down to 96, dropping below 100. Don Ragu still maxed out, and he is getting upgrades, upgrades, additional bases. He can afford it all. Going for the drop upgrade, going for Neural Parasite in order to Neural Parasite the Archons. And the plus two attack upgrade for the Roach is now being researched as well. This you know, is wow. MC does have his natural remade right now, but it's not going to be there for long, considering the Roaches have seen it. And the probes that were being transferred there have been caught. The Archons unable to participate in this fight. And this is just a slow but painful death that MC is dying right now. Don Ragu is going for the attack. He's streaming up that random force field being placed over MC. A beautiful but not enough. Another stop hits the Roaches. And DRG has to retreat again, but he is just preparing for another attack. A barrage of attacks is hitting MC right now. And he's down to 50 supply against 174. Finally, finally, Don Ragu breaks through the defense of his opponent, but he has to retreat as all his roaches you know, are MC, down in the red. He is doing everything as best as he can. He's got Templar here as well. If he gets a good storm off on these units, he may kill some of the roaches. It looks like they just have too many hit points. If these cannons fall, it may be curtains for MC. He's targeting down the cannons. MC with a few more units here. They're being fumbled. And it looks like this may finally be the end. There's the lights out. Now another, if another fungal hits these stalkers, they will die as well. There we go, fungal time, and all those units are doomed. And from behind, Don Ragu trying to save his investors while MC is attacking again with the stalkers, but he's down to 45 supply, and this has to be it. DRG still on 168 supply. He has just so many resources, the advantages of the Zerg player. Uh, Look at what MC big. is trying. MC fighting at the best possible angle every time. Fighting at the top of the ramp with a better concave. This time, though, he doesn't have any Archons at the top of his ramp at the bottom right. And the Roaches, heavily upgraded, cannot be stopped this time. He's taking down the probes at the third base. MC about to lose this game. Don Ragu and MC would advance to the round of six. Stefano would be eliminated from this tournament, from the Blizzard Cup 2011. This looks like the Protoss player's last stand, and MC, he just doesn't give up. There's the GG. Finally, finally, that barrage has an effect on the Protoss, and DRG takes that game, takes the win, is 3-1 in the group, and advances to the round of six. MC being tied with Stefano is losing, and there is the 
Zerg player from France who is now eliminated. MC is looking sad, but still, we will see him on Wednesday again. And Dongregu, a little bit, you know, uh, flustered, I feel like, with some of the, the builds that, or some of the build that he was faced with, but I have to say, like, once he dealt with the Phoenixes, once he got that one fungal on the Phoenix, he was like, well, that's it. I actually have a better army than you, and I have control of this game. MC did everything right at the end of that game. I was watching that, I was like, is it possible? Because, I mean, Dongregu didn't take the entire map, for example. I was like, you know, MC is actually fighting here. For some people, it might look like, oh, MC is just drawing it out. But actually, he had his natural back up. He still had his main up. He kept a lot of the production facilities alive in his main. He had great engagements. He was actually way over cost efficiently destroying the upgrade or the uh, unupgraded roaches of Dongregu at every turn. Every time he tried to break up the ramp, the storms were great. The Archons were doing real damage. And I was like, if MC can just hold on, he might be able to pull this out. But Dongregu just kept attacking, attacking, attacking. And eventually, MC just could not blink every time in four different places at once. And he eventually did break it. Him. But I feel like uh, Dongregu actually was, he should have upgraded better. He was actually trying to assault that base at the bottom right that had tons of cans instead of just going for the natural, which have a lot of income, and also the production facilities there. So there was a scary moment there where MC might have possibly been able to claw his way back through, but unfortunately for him, not quite able to, and more unfortunately for Stefano, taking fourth place in this group, not able to make it in. So we've got three Koreans, Dongregu, MVP, and MC advancing to Terrence and a Protoss. Stefano, in the end, was not able to advance to the next group. One of the foreigners in the Wizard Cup 2011, therefore already eliminated. Tomorrow, in the second group, there will be Naniwa fighting. We have the Group B with uh, I'm Nasty with Slayers MMA, FXO, Lino, Quantic Gaming, Naniwa, and TSL Fold, another top group with a lot of awesome players that are trying to aim for the round of six. Yeah. And uh, I gotta say, Naniwa, he's got a lot of fans right now. He's gonna try to get out of that group. Another foreigner in there, he may be able to do it. You know, he's beaten all these players before in certain situations. Normally in the GSL, Naniwa has not had the best results, but I think in this group, if he really prepares, and I know he's been preparing, he's been traveling a lot, but his mind is set. He's got a cool new hairstyle, for example. <laughs> you know, he's, he's ready for this. I think he might be able to get out of the group tomorrow, especially considering that three players get out instead of two. I think he could definitely do it. Yeah. Um, well, being a foreigner myself, we are probably going to root for Naniwa. I would like to see him do well, uh, not only because he's a foreigner, but also because he's my friend and he's a Protoss. I mean, everything's going towards that. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, for him, of course, just coming back to Korea and now switching teams, he's now not any longer in the uh, team house for MVP, but is going to start tail uh, with the training. He's putting a lot of effort in it, but it has been kind of hard, so he was not able to train as much as he uh, wanted to, especially with just spending a week in uh, Sweden with his family he just mentioned it today at the interviews and said, therefore I think that Naniwa with the right mindset can definitely go a long way but it will be hard for him and yep. there he is in the back by the way I just want to mention the finals will be on Saturday at the, uh, at the same location that we had our finals at last time an hour early it's the same location that the uh, Code S finals were last season so make sure that if you didn't go to that Go again, it's at the Children's Grand Park subway station. It's right outside, you go out of the exit, you go to the left, it's right there. It's a pretty big convention center. We're gonna have a huge 1,000 inch screen for that. It's gonna be, I can't even imagine, guys, it's gonna be three times bigger than we've ever seen before. It's gonna be a massive screen, be there. The Code S finals were already amazing, was really amazed by the venue. So guys, definitely make sure that you are there if you are currently in Seoul or in the area. So that will be just great. And I think that's it for today, yeah. for the two of us. Wolf, thank you very much. Thank really you very much. Today. I enjoyed it as well. See you guys next time.